Uh oh, uh oh. Are you gonna Nothing confess your love for me right now? Ah, I'm ready. Right now. I'm ready for it. It's been happening. Okay. Well, listen, fellas, I don't have to tell you guys. Uh, you know, obviously, they're. Uh, consistently in Hollywood outcries for representation, diversity, and inclusion. And yet here we are on your show where I feel like it's very rare that we get to explore a gay relationship on a procedural like this. And so I'm curious, what has this experience of telling this story meant to you guys? We've been asked this question since day one. And, you know, I think the cool thing about this question is that it's definitely evolved. I think simply because of how large the fandom has grown how big the show has become, how many more people are able to watch the show and appreciate this couple and, and see themselves on screen. The appreciation and the, the honor of portraying this couple on screen, it, it literally grows by the day because I talk to people almost every single day that are tuning in for the first time. And I sort of forget that like people are gonna watch the show for the first time like right now. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a constant wave of new viewers, of new people that appreciate this, of people that really needed this. Has it at any point felt like a daunting task or a responsibility to tell this story? I mean, absolutely. Because essentially what we're doing, we're creating conversations, right? Mm -hmm. By having both Carlos and TK be a couple on a network, primetime television, in a Ryan Murphy show, with a decent level of popularity and, and fandom, it's it's kind of, it's a little bit impossible not, not to, to gain traction. And that's something that I'm extremely grateful for I think our purpose my purpose at least is to portray this couple with as much humanity as possible so when people that don't encounter members of the LGBTQIA plus members very frequently what they're able to see are not necessarily one-dimensional characters that are defined by their sexuality these are people who are also they're also first responders right. they risk their lives for others to save others to be there for others and they also happen to be gay and they also happen to be in a beautiful relationship what they can see is that they can see people they can see you know, two human beings that happen to be all those things as well. You definitely have to approach it with a certain level of responsibility because you want to get it right. You want to create a conversation. What's wild to think about, Ronan, is you've credited the show for inspiring your own coming out, you yeah. know? Um, was there people in the cast that you leaned on uh, before that announcement or that you shared your story with that kind of helped you along the way? Yeah, I mean, this handsome devil right here you know yeah. he was he was one of the i think he's the second or third person i ever like literally worded those those words to i leaned on him very heavily you know we had a lot of private conversations at work and, and outside of work and you know i i felt that this year was finally the right time to do it and you know i was that i sort of had a fear of you know of like what's gonna happen to my family what's gonna happen to my friends so i leaned very heavily on rafael and you know hearing his perspective firsthand and hearing his experiences, I, I think it gave me a lot of confidence just to do it and just sort of be like, you know, whatever happens, happens. But like, I got your support, I got your love, and um, I got your advice and it, it helped a lot. You know, it was nice to, to sort of have that little secret for, you know, two seasons with him. So at least he sees me. It was just really nice. I found an incredible man who showed me that it is okay to open up my heart again. We all have our own journey. And I mean, I'm grateful that Ronan even, you know, decided to open up to me uh, when we when we first started the conversation, because it doesn't matter where you are. It's very hard and you're constantly coming out. You're constantly coming out to people that you don't know. And especially with with all these lights on, you, all yeah. these cameras on you. You know, it's, uh, it's not easy. I do want to talk about the fandom because the fans are so invested in this couple. Like, hashtag Tarlos Tuesdays are lit. Do you ever imagine that Tarlos would get this kind of love or reaction from fans on this show? Not like this. No, no. <laughs> no, no. I'd be lying if I said, yeah. No, right. not not, yeah. not like this. I, I thought, you know, there'd be pockets of people that, you know, appreciate it and love it. And it's a hot relationship. But I think what I'm very pleased is that people are tuning in and connecting to the emotional and the humanity side of these two people. Not just like, oh, it's two hot dudes making out, you know? Mm -hmm. 
that's very surface. And I think it's it's the heart and the soul of, of Carlos and TK that people are really connecting to and tuning in every single moment. Rafael, how do you feel about all mm. this attention? I'm a little bit of an introvert, so sometimes <laughs> it can get overwhelming. Overwhelming, uh, yeah. The thing that you have to, that I have to remember that it's, as, and, and I actively choose to do this, is that at the end of the day, this is not about me. This is not about Rafael. This is about a different sort of conversation that we need to be having. If it's this many people re-watching clips of two people that happen to be men in a relationship, having very intimate moments with each other emotionally, mm -hmm. mentally, and going through this. And if people are feeling very attracted to that, are watching and re-watching and are creating fan art and are creating uh, those, those clips that they do with the music and it's like, you know, it's very creative. We need to pay attention to, the, to that because the people are asking for it. Absolutely. The people want it. Craving. So uh, they're they're craving it. They're latching onto it, and they're claiming, "No, th this is this is ours. This is this is what we want." And and I'm totally fine with that. You know, it, we we talk about representation and inclusivity, but it's the epitome of that. You know, mm -hmm. people feel you know in many ways people that look like us, that think like us, that speak like us, uh, or not. They see themselves in Carlos and Carlos and TK. And so, I mean, I, I feel extremely grateful, but at the same time, I'm just like, oh, right. We, we need to be doing a, a lot more of this. How would you guys describe your relationship off screen? You're not in production for season three yet, right? I, and I think you guys are on opposite sides of the coast. Do you miss each other? Well, I came here for a week. You know, it's fine. The <laughs> I think he's seen enough of me for one year. He's like, I need a summer break. Of course I miss him, man. We always have an incredible time. There's never a dull moment when we're on screen and off screen. So come back very soon. <laughs> I'm coming I, back, don't worry. I feel like with any on screen couple, it could be two men, it could be a man and a woman. People get so invested in these shows that they want the actors in real life to get together. What do you say to those fans who ship you two in real life? Here's the way I take it. Uh-oh. Um, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Are you gonna Nothing confess your love for me right now? I'm ready. <laughs> right now? I'm ready for it. It's happening. Okay. I choose to take it a, a deeper route. I see it as, you know, sometimes people, sometimes they have a really hard time disassociating character from actor. Mm -hmm. And that informs me that a lot of people, the, the way that they view the world and the way that they educate themselves are through television. This is why representation does matter and inclusivity matters because there are people that look at us and genuinely think that the people that we portray are exactly who we are in real life, right? And and I've had people ask me, oh, have you ever, did you always want it to be a cop? I'm like, I, I <laughs> you know, like it's, it's yeah, I mean, sure, sure. I mean, I think we've all, we've all had- At one point, things. yeah. Yeah, yeah. When they have these thoughts about personal relationships off screen i think just having the awareness that at the end they were also people you know and there is a difference there is a difference this is why it's so much fun to go on set because we also get to step off set mm -hmm. right we get to reset and get to play around but you know it's a different reality we're not gonna hear about any like ross and rachel flirting in 20 years at the <laughs> cast reunion that's not gonna happen I, i'm always flirting with rafa I mean, <laughs> That's not news, so. You don't need to wait 20 years. What do you guys know about the upcoming season? And also, where do you hope to see your respective characters go? I mean, I can reveal that the writer's room is very much open. There's already some insane storylines percolating. I Did was you asking. Say at all? Do you, do you get to have any input, especially going to this third season, on how this relationship is portrayed? I always bombard our showrunner with text messages and like, Let's do this, man. For two seasons, I'm like, so when's Car when's Tarlo's getting married? You know, so that's like he teased it publicly that you know it's 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 very much in the future for them. So that's that's exciting. Um, but you know, I was told that there's some really intense storylines percolating, and I was like, you mean rescues? And they're like, no, personal. Like they're really diving deep personal this year because you know I think we finally were able to sort of establish the dynamic of all the characters, and now we could dive super deep into them. We're at the end of Pride Month. What does Pride mean to you? And also, do you remember your first Pride? This mm. is my first Pride being out, but you know, I used to always go to the Pride parades in New York. That's where I'm from. And uh, I just 
secretly felt so at home. You know, Pride now for me, it means so much now, you know, especially with like really connecting with the community and talking to people from the community from all over the world. I think we can't forget the people that paved the way. It's something that we should be proud of and continuing the conversation and continuing, you know, this amazing journey that we're on. And I think it's a sense of respect for everyone that has quite literally died for their cause to be mm. themselves. People that were at the very forefront of, of the marches of the chaos, the good trouble, you know, were queer people of color, were trans women of color. And I think pride means getting a lot more microphones and passing on the microphone to them. For me, it means respecting everyone that came before, celebrating them, celebrating the now, but also celebrate everything that we want to be.